As the Starlight Voyager emerged from the blackness of hyperspace, the Dyson Sphere materialized before us, an incomprehensible structure floating in the void like the husk of some ancient god. Even after decades of preparation, the site surpassed all expectations. Nothing in human history, not the pyramids, not the orbital cities of Mars, could compare to the sheer scale of what lay ahead. The sphere was both a marvel and a horror, an artifact of a civilization so advanced that it could manipulate stars and matter on a scale beyond our wildest dreams. But dreams have a way of turning into nightmares. I felt the familiar tug of skepticism as I stood on the bridge, watching the sphere rotate slowly against the backdrop of the red giant it encased. It wasn't just the structure's size that was unsettling. It was the silence. A structure like this should have been brimming with activity. Instead, there was nothing. Just the cold, dead quiet of a megastructure. Captain James Hunter, standing rigid beside me, broke the silence. We're in orbit, Dr. Mitchell. Scans show the surface is stable, but we're picking up some odd energy readings. Could be interference from the sphere's power systems, or what's left of them. Let's keep our distance until we know more. I don't want us getting fried by some ancient defense grid. Hunter gave a curt nod and relayed the orders to his crew. He was the kind of man who thrived in the military. Rigid, disciplined, and utterly fearless. But even he had a tightness around his mouth that I hadn't seen before. He was right to be cautious. This wasn't like any mission we'd undertaken before. This was the unknown, true and unfiltered. Behind us, Dr. Isaac Warren paced nervously. We can't just sit here, Mitchell. This could be the greatest discovery in human history. We need to get down there and start exploring. The sphere isn't going to wait for us to catch our breath. Relax, Warren, I replied not taking my eyes off the sphere. This thing's been here for who knows how long. It's not going anywhere. Warren was brilliant, no doubt, but his ambition bordered on recklessness. He saw the sphere as a ladder, a way to climb to the top of the scientific community, no matter the cost. But this wasn't just another archaeological dig or a study of alien flora. Captain, I continued, send out the drones. I want a full survey of the landing area. Look for any signs of activity, any signs of, well, anything. Hunter gestured to Lieutenant Marcus Ellis, who was monitoring the ship's systems with the intensity of a man waiting for a bomb to go off. Ellis was young, sharp, and more paranoid than I would have liked, but I couldn't fault him for it. He'd seen what space could do to people, the madness that came from isolation and the terror of the unknown. He knew that out here, Survival wasn't just about strength or intelligence. It was about staying one step ahead of the horrors that lurked in the dark. The drones launched, tiny specks against the vastness of the sphere, their cameras and sensors feeding data back to us in real time. The screen displayed images of the sphere's surface, smooth, dark material that seemed to absorb all light, creating a mysterious, almost void-like appearance. The structures were massive, angular, with no discernible pattern or purpose. Some were intact, while others appeared to be crumbling, disintegrating into space like the bones of some ancient beast. No signs of life, Ellis reported. But the energy readings are spiking in some areas. It's like there's something moving rhythmically beneath the surface. Beneath the surface? I repeated, frowning. What could be down there? Could be anything, Warren interjected, unable to contain his excitement. A power source, a reactor, maybe even some kind of AI. We need to investigate. Hunter shot him a look. We need to be careful. We don't know what we're dealing with. We're dealing with the most advanced technology in the universe, Warren snapped back. If we're careful, we might as well pack up and go home. This is why we're here, Mitchell, to explore to discover. I clenched my jaw, torn between the desire to uncover the sphere's secrets and the need to keep my team safe. The sphere was a puzzle, a riddle carved into the fabric of space and time, and like all puzzles, it demanded to be solved. 
but some riddles weren't meant to be answered. Fine, I said finally. We'll explore, but we do it my way, cautiously. Warren smirked, already thinking about the accolades that would come from whatever we found. I wasn't as optimistic. As the drones continued their sweep, one of them caught something on its sensors, a large circular formation, distinct from the rest of the structure. It was an entrance of sorts, a doorway into the heart of the sphere. It wasn't active, but it was intact. That's our way in, I said. Prep the landing team, we're going down. Hunter gave the order, and within minutes, we were suited up and ready to disembark. The descent to the sphere's surface was smooth, the ship's thrusters keeping us steady as we approached the landing site. The closer we got, the more the scale of the sphere hit home. The structures towered above us, dwarfing even the largest of Earth's skyscrapers. It was like standing at the base of a mountain, only this mountain was hollow, artificial, and so ancient and massive that it was difficult to conceive. The landing gear touched down, and the airlock opened. I was the first to step onto the sphere's surface, my boots sinking slightly into the strange, dark material. It was solid, yet it had a give to it, like stepping on a thick layer of rubber. This place is incredible, Warren breathed, stepping beside me. I didn't respond, my eyes scanning the horizon. The landscape was barren, lifeless. Let's move. We need to find that entrance. We made our way across the surface. The entrance was a massive circular portal embedded in the structure. It was inactive, but there was a power to it, a sense of waiting, like a door that had been closed for millennia, just waiting for someone to open it. As we approached, the portal began to vibrate. We've activated something, Ellis said. I don't like this. Neither do I, I admitted, my eyes locked on the portal. I glanced back at the team, their faces hidden behind their helmets, but their body language betraying their tension. This was it. The moment we'd been preparing for. The moment when everything would change. For better or worse, we were about to step into the unknown. One by one, we stepped through the portal. The darkness swallowed us whole, and for a moment, it felt as though we were floating in an endless void cut off from reality. Then the darkness parted and we found ourselves standing in a vast chamber. The walls were a shifting mass of black marked by faint glowing symbols. This place, Warren whispered, it's, it's alive. I knew what he meant. The chamber didn't feel like a mere structure. It felt like something that was aware of our presence, something that had been dormant for eons and was now slowly waking up. Hunter took point, his hand resting on the grip of his plasma rifle, eyes scanning the shifting walls. Ellis was behind him, his own weapon ready, though his fingers twitched nervously on the trigger. I could see the strain in his posture, the way his head jerked back and forth as if expecting something to leap out at us. Warren, on the other hand, was almost childlike in his curiosity. He darted from one side of the chamber to the other, his fingers tracing the symbols. I could see the calculations in his eyes, the gears turning as he tried to decipher the alien script. Don't touch anything, I warned. Warren shot me a look of annoyance but pulled his hand back. We're not going to learn anything by just standing around. We need to interact with the environment, gather information. And we will, I said, trying to keep my tone measured but we do it carefully. We don't know what kind of security measures could be in place. Warren muttered something, but didn't argue further. I could tell he was itching to start experimenting, to poke and prod at the alien technology, but even he wasn't reckless enough to go against orders. As we explored further into the chamber, I started to notice subtle shifts in the architecture. The walls, once smooth and uniform, began to warp and twist. The symbols blinked, their light growing stronger and then dropping, almost like a heartbeat. Do you feel that? Ellis asked. Feel what? The, the air. It's heavy. I nodded, though he couldn't see me. I felt it too. The weight of the place, the sense that we were intruding somewhere we didn't belong. 
It wasn't just the physical sensation, though that was bad enough. It was the feeling of something ancient and malevolent studying us, deciding what to do with us. We kept moving, the chamber's layout growing more complex and disorienting. The walls began to curve, resulting in angles that didn't make sense. At times, it felt like we were walking in circles, even though the path was straight. And then we found it. At the far end of the chamber, rising from the floor, was a massive machine. It towered over us, its surface covered in the same symbols that adorned the walls, though these were far more complex, almost like a language of their own. What, what is this? Warren breathed, trembling with excitement. It's a control system, I said, though I wasn't entirely sure. Or, or something more? More? Hunter asked, his focus on the machine. It's not just a control system. It's part of the sphere. Maybe even its heart. The words felt strange in my mouth, like I was speaking a truth I didn't fully understand. Warren moved closer. This could be the key to everything, he said. The sphere's purpose, its creators, everything. Warren's hand brushed against the machine, and the effect was immediate. The chamber trembled. The symbols on the machine activated, their glow so intense it hurt to look at. Warren was transfixed, his hand still on the machine, his eyes wide as he stared at it. This is it, Mitchell. This is what we came for. The machine made a deep, vibrating noise, similar to the growl of a prehistoric beast. Ellis staggered, clutching his head. I can't, I can't breathe, he gasped his voice cracking with fear. Hunter grabbed Warren by the shoulder and pulled him away from the machine. As soon as Warren was yanked back, the machine grounded to a halt and the glow from the symbols faded. We staggered back the way we came, the chamber shifting around us, the angles warping even more as if the sphere was trying to trap us within itself. I could hear Ellis muttering to himself as he tried to keep it together. It's not... It's not real, he kept saying. It's just... It's just in my head but I knew it wasn't just in his head. The sphere was aware of us, aware and perhaps angry. The walls, once dark and solid, now rippled like liquid metal, warping and distorting as if the sphere was trying to reshape itself, or worse, reshape us. Keep it together, Hunter said, his voice cutting sharply through the panic. His grip on his plasma rifle was white-knuckled, but his eyes were steady. He'd seen action in deep space before. His training held, keeping him grounded amidst the chaos. Warren, on the other hand, was far from steady. He stared wide-eyed at the walls, his mouth moving silently as if he were trying to speak but couldn't find the words. His earlier confidence had evaporated, replaced by a creeping terror that I recognised all too well. It was the kind of fear that stripped away the veneer of rational thought, leaving only the primal instinct to survive. We need to go deeper, he whispered, finally finding his voice, though it was thin and trembling. Deeper, Ellis spat. Are you out of your mind? This place is trying to kill us. He's right, Warren, I said, trying to keep the panic from creeping into my own voice. We've pushed our luck too far already. We need to find a way out before this thing decides we're a threat. But Warren wasn't listening. He approached the undulating walls, reaching out with his hands as if to make contact. It's a language he murmured. The sphere is speaking to us, trying to communicate. We just need to... He didn't finish. As his fingers brushed the surface, the walls convulsed violently, and a blast of energy shot out, hurling him backward. He slammed into the ground, his helmet cracking with the impact, and for a moment I thought he was dead. I rushed to his side. He was breathing, but his eyes were unfocused, blood trickling from his nose and ears. Whatever the sphere had done to him, it had scrambled his brain, leaving him disoriented and barely conscious. We need to find the source of the energy. Whatever's powering this place, it's tied to the sphere's consciousness. If we can shut it down, maybe we can stop this. That's a big maybe, Hunter said, but he didn't argue. Ellis looked like he was on the verge of a full-blown panic attack, but he nodded, gripping his weapon. Just tell me where to shoot, he muttered. We need to head towards the core, I said, recalling the scans we'd done earlier. 
The power readings were strongest there. If there's any place to shut this thing down, that's it. With Hunter and Ellis supporting a barely conscious Warren, we continued, advancing further into the heart of the sphere. The corridor opened into another vast space, even larger than the last. In the center of the room, an enormous structure emerged, a colossal mechanical heart, its surface covered in the same symbols that adorned the walls. As we approached the core, the air around us began to warp, distorting our vision. Shadows moved at the edges of our sight, shapes that seemed to emerge from the floor blending into hazy, bizarre silhouettes. They were insubstantial, like smoke or mist, but their presence left me profoundly unsettled. Hunter raised his rifle and fired a warning shot, aiming to deter the threat. The plasma bolt pierced one of the shadowy figures, but it was ineffective. The shape simply reformed, the smoke swirling back into its original form. They're not real, I said, though my voice shook. They're projections, illusions created by the sphere to scare us off. Yeah, Ellis said, his voice high-pitched with terror. Well, it's working! The shadows closed in, reaching out toward us. It took everything I had to push through the fear, to remind myself that they were just illusions, tricks of light and energy. But even as I told myself that, I could feel something else. A creeping presence that slipped into my mind. Whispering dark thoughts, feeding on my doubts and fears. There has to be a control panel, I said, scanning the structure for anything that looked like a control interface. Something we can use to shut it down. Hunter was already searching, his hands running over the surface of the machine, feeling for hidden switches or panels. Ellis stayed close, his rifle pointed at the shadows that now circled us, closing in tighter with each passing second. Got something, Hunter said, his hand pressing into a section of the machine that gave way under his touch. A panel slid open, revealing a series of controls, alien in design, but recognizable enough for us to guess their function. I moved to the panel, trying to decipher their meaning. The symbols were similar to the ones we'd seen throughout the sphere, but more complex. I had no idea what they meant, but I knew we didn't have time to figure it out. Just hit something, Ellis urged. Anything, we need to stop this. I reached out and pressed the largest symbol on the panel, hoping it was the right choice. The effect was immediate, the core vibrated, the symbols flaring with one last burst of light before fading out, their glow decreasing to nothing. The vibration that had filled the chamber ceased, leaving behind a stark silence. For a moment, I thought we'd succeeded. The shadows around us wavered as if they were about to dissipate. But then the floor beneath us rumbled. The core wasn't shutting down, it was waking up. The shadows that had been closing in on us suddenly coalesced into solid forms, their smoky bodies solidifying into horrifying figures that advanced toward us. Hunter urged everyone to move quickly as he fired his rifle at the advancing figures. The plasma bolts struck their targets, ripping through the creatures and causing them to burst into wisps of smoke. But their numbers multiplied as they emerged from the walls, the floor and the air around us. We ran, dragging the barely conscious Warren with us. The corridor behind us filled with the howling cries of the creatures, their voices a maddening noise that burrowed into our minds. The walls around us began to close in, the metal warping and twisting to form a barrier that would trap us inside. Hunter and Ellis fired their weapons, trying to blast through the closing walls, but it was no use. The sphere was sealing us in, closing us off from any hope of escape. Just as all hope seemed lost, I saw a faint light at the end of the corridor, a doorway that had appeared out of nowhere, as if the sphere itself was offering us one last chance. The light grew brighter as we approached, a blinding white that filled my vision, erasing everything else. We burst through the doorway and the world around us vanished in a flash of light. When the light faded, I was standing in a place that contradicted everything I thought I knew about the sphere. Gone were the dark walls and the atmosphere that had weighed us down. In their place was a vibrant, bustling environment filled with light and energy. It was like stepping from a nightmare into a dream. 
The first thing I noticed was the architecture. The walls were formed of bright, crystalline structures that radiated a warm, prismatic glow. Light danced across the surfaces, refracting into a spectrum of colors that shifted and changed with every movement. I turned to check on the others. Hunter and Ellis were still with me, their faces hidden behind their helmets, but I could see the same shock in their posture that I felt in my own. We had escaped the nightmare of the sphere's core, but the relief I had expected to feel wasn't there. Something was wrong. Terribly wrong. Hunter knelt beside the fallen xenobiologist, his face indicating panic. It was only then that I realized Warren hadn't moved since we emerged from the light. His body lay limp on the ground. I knelt beside him, checking for a pulse. There was nothing, no sign of life, no movement. His suit systems were dead, his vitals flatlined. Warren was gone. We lost him. I said quietly, the words heavy with finality. There was no time to grieve, no time to process the loss. The sphere had claimed another victim, and we were no closer to understanding what had happened. Hunter stood slowly, his shoulders sagging. Ellis, visibly shaken, muttered something under his breath, though I couldn't make out the words. It was only then that I noticed them. The beings that filled this strange environment. They moved around us, oblivious to our presence. They were squat, robust figures with rocky, mineral-like exoskeletons that refracted the light around them, giving them a prismatic appearance that was mesmerizing to watch. Their multiple arms ended in claw-like appendages, dexterous and precise as they manipulated the environment with a skill that bordered on the supernatural. They don't see us, Ellis said, his voice trembling. No, I agreed watching as one of the beings passed right by Hunter without so much as a glance in his direction. They can't see us. These beings were clearly engaged in complex tasks. They adjusted panels on the walls, recalibrated energy conduits, and manipulated holographic displays that materialized in the air with a wave of their hands. Their movements were fluid, almost meditative, as if each action was part of a larger, harmonious whole. What the hell is this place? Hunter asked. It's the past, I said, the realization hitting me. Or maybe a different dimension, somewhere the sphere was still operational. We're seeing these beings in their prime, before everything went wrong. Ellis looked at me, his face pale beneath his helmet. You're saying we're... What, time travelers now? How is that even possible? I shook my head, unable to provide an answer. The sphere's technology was beyond our grasp. Manipulating time and space was just another tool in its arsenal. But whether we were in the past or a parallel dimension, one thing was clear. We were witnessing a moment frozen in time. A glimpse into the sphere's original purpose. As we moved further into this new environment, we began to piece together what had happened. The beings were not just maintaining the sphere, they were actively trying to reinforce its containment systems. Massive energy fields crackled as they directed them into place, forming barriers that flashed with a weak light. Glyphs, similar to the ones we had seen earlier, were being carved into the walls, each one a part of a larger pattern. This is what the sphere was built for, I said. It's a prison, a containment structure for something, something they couldn't control. Those things, Hunter muttered, his eyes narrowing as he watched the beings work. The shadows we saw, they're the prisoners, aren't they? The eldritch entities. They were here, trapped within the sphere, and these aliens were desperately trying to keep them contained. As we watched, the beings' demeanor began to shift. The calm, meditative focus that had characterized their actions gave way to something more desperate, Energy fields fluctuated, their stability weakening, and the beings moved with rising speed. I could see the strain in their movements as they adjusted the controls. They're losing control, Ellis said. He was right. These beings were on the verge of failure, their containment systems buckling under the strain of whatever was trapped within the sphere. This was the moment when everything went wrong, when these beings realized they couldn't contain the entities they had captured. As if in response to my thoughts, 
the first signs of the shadows began to appear. At the edges of the chamber, where the light was dimmest, dark shapes began to form. They were the same entities we had encountered before, but here, in this place, they were stronger, more defined. The boundaries between dimensions were thin, and the shadows slipped through with ease. They're here, Hunter said. They followed us. The shadows moved toward us, slowly, as if savoring the hunt. They were feeding on our fear, growing stronger with every passing moment. The beings, oblivious to our presence, continued their desperate work, but it was clear they were fighting a losing battle. The energy fields fluctuated and faded, and the shadows surged forward, slipping through the gaps in the containment. We were trapped, caught in a nightmare that was only growing worse. The shadows were closing in, their forms more solid, more real with every step they took. They were no longer mere silhouettes of darkness. They had become creatures of flesh and bone, distorted by the eldritch energies that fueled them. And then, the light returned. It flared up around us, blinding in its intensity, and for a moment I thought we had been pulled back to the present, that the nightmare was over. But it wasn't a rescue. It was the final act of these beings, their last attempt to contain the entities that had breached their prison. I could see it now, the pattern in their actions, the sequence that would trigger the sphere's collapse. The shadows retreated, their shapes wavering and disappearing as the beings initiated the collapse. The crystalline structures around us began to crack and shatter, the walls crumbling as the energy fields were redirected inward, sealing the entities within. The light consumed us once more, and the world around us vanished in a flash of brilliance. When the light faded, we were back in the present, surrounded by the dead ruins of the Dyson Sphere. The vibrant, living world of its creators had vanished, leaving us once again in the hollow silence of this ancient structure. But something had changed. The shadows were no longer just fleeting glimpses of darkness. They had taken form, and they were hunting us. We stood in the center of a chamber, the remnants of the sphere's creator's technology all around us. Hunter tightened his grip on his plasma rifle, his eyes scanning the darkness that surrounded us. The once dead shadows now solidified into flesh and bone, fused with the dark energy of the sphere. We need to find that portal, Hunter said. It's our only way out. Stay close, I ordered. We move together. The chamber seemed to stretch on forever, the shadows twisting and warping the space around us. The sphere was trying to trap us within its depths. Suddenly, one of the creatures came at us from the darkness, its malformed limbs reaching out. Hunter reacted, his plasma rifle spitting bolts of energy that tore through the creature's flesh. The thing let out a scream, its body convulsing as it disintegrated into a cloud of ash and shadow. Then in the distance we saw the portal. A faint shimmering light at the end of a long corridor, barely visible through the thickening darkness. It was the same portal we had entered through, our one hope of escape from this nightmare. But the creatures were not about to let us go without a fight. As we sprinted toward the portal, they descended upon us in a wave, their forms blocking our path. Hunter fired his plasma rifle, taking down the creatures quickly and effectively, but there were too many of them. They swarmed over us, their claws tearing at our suits, their teeth snapping at our flesh. I could hear Ellis screaming, his voice high-pitched and filled with terror as he struggled to fight them off. Mitchell, go, Hunter said, his voice filled with urgency. Get through the portal. I'll hold them off. I knew there was no other choice. Hunter was right. If I didn't go now, none of us would make it out. I grabbed Ellis's arm and pulled him toward the portal. Ellis stumbled, struggling to keep up. The creatures were all around us now, their forms closing in. Hunter fought with everything he had, his plasma rifle blazing as he cut down the creatures. But there were too many. Even as he fired, more creatures emerged from the shadows. I turned and ran, dragging Ellis with me as we sprinted towards the portal. The creatures were on us in an instant their claws tearing at our suits, their teeth snapping at our heels. But we were close. So close. 
We reached the portal just as the creatures descended upon us. I pushed Ellis through first, the portal's light flaring as it activated. I could feel the creature's breath hot and foul on my neck as they tried to pull me back into the darkness. I rushed forward, hurling myself through the portal just as the creatures closed in. The world around dissolved into a blinding light. I felt nothing but the sensation of falling, of being pulled through an endless void. And then, suddenly, it was over. I hit the ground hard, the air knocked out of my lungs as I landed on cold metal. The light from the portal faded, and I found myself on the floor just outside the entrance of the Dyson Sphere. The immense structure towered above us, silent and mysterious, its secrets hidden once more. Beside me, Ellis was breathless with relief. But Hunter... Hunter was gone. I pushed myself to my feet. I could still hear the fading sounds of the creature's screams in my mind, still feel the touch of their claws on my skin. But we were safe. For now. Ellis looked at me, his eyes filled with grief and guilt. We left him, he whispered. We left him behind. I nodded, unable to find the words to respond. The loss of Hunter was a heavy blow. We had escaped the sphere, but we hadn't escaped unscathed. The shadows, the creatures, they had taken something from us that we could never get back. In the distance, the Starlight Voyager stood waiting. The stillness outside seemed almost unbearable after the chaos inside the sphere. As we made our way to the ship, I looked out at the darkness one last time. The sphere was behind us now, but the shadows, the shadows would always be with us. And as we left that ancient structure behind, I wondered if we had truly escaped, or if we had simply traded one nightmare for another.